Hey what is up guys, in this video we're going to cover the best graphics card for gaming and 1080 and 1440 and in 4k and early 2020 and in the video description there is a great deal of information, I've also linked up some of the best graphics card deals in case you want to check them out. With that said we're gonna look at the best graphics card for entry gaming all the way up to $100, we got the best graphics card for $200, uh, $300 and lastly we got some of the best $400 graphics cards and beyond that. With that said let's start by looking at the entry camera category up to $100 price point. Let's start with Nvidia if you want to buy new. Nvidia is selling the GT 1030 and this is the best Nvidia has to offer but this is quite frankly terrible for gaming so you definitely want to avoid that. That said if you're able to find a used GTX 1050 on eBay or Amazon for example the 1050 can be a viable option. Now the 1050 comes in two variants. We got the 2GB version and we got the 4GB and you want to get the latter one. But yeah, to try and summarize this, the GTX 1050 is the only valid option here and you want to make sure to pick the 4GB variant. With that said, let's look at the red team. So for just over the $100 mark, the RX 560 is the unbeatable king here and there is no question about it. And if you're looking for the best bang for the buck $100 graphics card and you don't want to buy from the used market, the RX 560 is your answer. But yeah, if you're building a whole new computer for example, uh, picking up the AMD Ryzen 3200G or the 3400G for example uh, can also be an option. Now, these APUs includes an RX Vega 8 graphics chip capable of running most eSport games at frame rates above the 60fps magic mark. Now, keep in mind though that both the 3200 and the 3400G cost more than $100 but considering the fact that you're getting both the processor and the graphics chip in the same box can make it a pretty good deal in the end. But in the end of the day the RX 560 outperforms the built-in graphics Vega 8 by a flipping ton so that is something that you want to keep in mind. But if you want to save as much as you can on the graphics card looking at the used market can be a brilliant option and snagging a GTX 960 or a GTX 970 for a cheap price tag might be worth considering. The R9 a 380X or similar can also be a great option for this price range as these cards offers pretty good 1080p performance. That all being said, if you're planning on playing games on your PC, I highly recommend you to spend a bit more than $100 as most of these uh, cards available under $100 performs pretty poorly in many modern games today and considering what you're paying you're not getting the best price and value here. With that said, let's jump up a bit to the budget category all the way up to $200. Right, at $200 or below if you got your eyes on the green team, the GTX 1650 or the 1650 Super should be your first go-to. The GTX 1650 can be found for as low as 140 US dollars and the Super offering can be found for as low as 160 US dollars, making the latter one the perfect 1080p graphics card offering from Nvidia under $200. Both cards do great in 1080p for the most part, but there is no denying that the Super card is what I mainly would recommend here and because the GTX 1660, the Super or the TI card starts at 229 US dollars, they are a little bit out of our budget here and so that leaves us with the slightly slower 1650 as the only option. Again coming in at around 160 US dollars for the Super card. Should also be said that the GTX 1650 performs similar to the GTX 1050Ti and so if you're able to find a cheap GTX 1050Ti for example that card is also worth considering. Now as for the red team AMD is planning on rolling out the RX 5500 series with full release in December 12th and here you should expect performance near the 1650 from Nvidia. As I'm making this video these cards haven't been released yet and so I'm not 100% sure how they will price these but yeah I'm going to link up some of the best RX 5500 500 cars in the video description. I'm also going to make a follow up video later to look at the performance. By looking at these numbers here, you should get some form of sense of what to expect in terms of performance. Should also say that these graphs are coming from AMD, so take these numbers with a small scoop of salt. But yeah, if we look beyond the RX 5500, as for the red team, there are just a handful of cars that we recommend here. The RX 580, or even better yet, the RX 590 is also a fantastic option. Right now you can actually pick up the XFX Fatboy RX 590 for just 
under 200 bucks, and this is the best deal that you can make right now in terms of performance. RX 590 is way faster than 1650, and it even beats the 1650 Super card. And it should be said that the RX 590 performs fantastic in 1080p, and in most cases, you're able to run your game in the highest graphics preset without dipping below the magic 60 FPS magic mark very often. Now, let's jump up a notch to mid range up to $300, and this allows you to run your games in 1080p at ultra settings and for the most part you can even run your games in 1440p with great results and so at $300 or below if you're able to find a GTX at 1070 on the used market at $200 or a bit more that's usually a pretty good deal. If you rather pick AMD a used RX 5700 is what you want to go for. You obviously want to be aware of the where of these GPUs coming from the used market and there is always a risk of getting a graphics card coming from a mining rig which is still quite possible so you definitely want to have that in mind. Now, if you decide to pick up a new graphics card as for the green team the GTX 1660 Super or the TI is without a doubt where you want to put your money. As for the red team the RX Vega 56 is on sale right now as opposed in this video and you can pick it up for 269 US dollars which is a pretty good deal and it's pretty much neck and neck with the GTX 1660 TI and it even beats the green team's card in a few games out there. Apart from that, AMD doesn't have much more to offer here, as the RX 5700 usually starts at $320 US dollars or more, and the RX 5700 XT being even more expensive, and so what I recommend is that if you're specifically after a card from the red team, I recommend you to save $30 and, and then snag the RX 5700. At the sub $300 price point, the GTX 1660 TI is a great deal and if you can find the TI model under $250 I wouldn't hesitate. And as for the GTX 1660 I wouldn't pay much more than $220 for this card. And so to try and wrap this up for around $250 you can pick up the GTX 1660 TI and if you got about $300 to spend yeah you definitely want to save those and get an RX 5700 or possibly an RTX 2060. So for this category you can get a ray tracing starting as low as 330 US dollars you can get the RTX 2060 which offers stellar performance in 1440p gaming as the similar price tag you can also snag the fairly new RX 5700 based on AMD's new RDNA architecture and 7 nanometer in terms of performance, well, the RX 5700 is performing a bit better for the most part. It also got two more uh, extra gigs of VRAM, which is also a nice bonus. The downside with the 5700 is that it does not support hardware accelerated ray tracing, which the RTX 2060 does. But yeah, activating ray tracing does, however, impact the performance quite a bit. And so this is something you have to keep in mind. Now, personally, if I get the shoes, I would probably pick the RX 5700 in the end. Another sweet bonus with AMD's new card is that you can actually BIOS flash these cards and unlock the same voltage and core clock speed as the RX 5700 XT and you can done this for free to get even more performance without having to spend any extra. Now looking at the used market, an Nvidia 980 Ti for example or a GTX 1080 or a 1080 Ti for example can also be viable options. SLI is also something that you might may want to consider. And as for the red team, the Vega 64 can also be worth considering. Lastly, we got the high-end category. Spending this much on a graphics card allows you to game at 4K at medium up to high settings. Now, there is no denying that Nvidia still holds the crown when we're looking at the market for graphics card capable of running games in 4K. Still though, with the release of Navi, the RX 5700 XT is definitely a viable option here. Now, keep in mind, again, AMD still doesn't offer a hardware accelerator ray tracing with RDNA and so we're gonna have to wait to later in 2020 until RDNA 2 hits the shelf for that. Uh, until then for ray tracing yeah you want to pick up the RTX 2080, the 2080 Super or the RTX 2080 Ti. If you want the best available graphics card right now that said the RX 5700 XT is also a great option coming in at just around $400. The 5700 XT is however uh, for the most part not capable of running games in 4k maxed out and so if you want to be able to do that the ludicrous RTX 2080 Ti 
is unfortunately currently where it's at now in case you got any questions guys please let me know in the comments below i'm gonna do my best to help you guys out thank you so much for watching this video till next time have an awesome day right